Bangor, Maine is the main exit and entry point for the majority of soldiers going to Iraq and Afghanistan or returning home. You know, they may start at these bases all over the country, uh, Fort Hood in Texas or Camp Pendleton in California, but they fly to Bangor, they refuel, all the troops come into the terminal for a couple hours and then they head over or coming back, it's the first piece of U.S. soil. They stop there on their way home and it's just become this place that all these troops stop and you know, they're, they're approaching a million troops now. These are some of your troops coming back from you know where. You wanna say hi, come on over. Welcome yes, to Maine, welcome to Bangor. My mom is one of the troop greeters profiled in, in the film, Joan is my mom and I'm the youngest of eight children, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm her baby. There's enough of them on Wednesday. Isn't yeah, yeah. that something? Bring your sleeping bag and pillow. I know. <laughs> After she retired, she really didn't have a lot of hobbies and a lot of things that were, you know, keeping her active. And, and then one day I called home and she wasn't home and I could never get her on the phone suddenly and I was kind of confused by what was going on and when I finally talked to her she said, uh, you know, we'll call my cell phone and I, I didn't understand why she would even have a cell phone and she said, I'm greeting troops at the airport and I'm going out at all hours of the day and night now to do this and, you know, kind of explained what she was doing. So when I went home for Christmas that year I just really wanted to see what had kind of energized her at 71 years old. You two are married? Yes, we are married. Is this your first trip over? No, it's our second again. Second? Yeah. It's my third. 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 It's been a... That's enough, isn't it? Uh, this is her last one, we're hoping. I'm done after this, so... so wow. It's not too bad, though. You know, you make the best of everything. We're right. just happy we get to go together one last time. Aaron actually is my fiance and uh, we started dating three months before we went to Bangor and he took me home to meet his mom and we decided to wake up with her and go to the airport and I first met Bill Knight there. Well, I haven't missed very many flights. I try to make them all. Welcome home, heroes! I think I was Welcome surprised, home. but I was Welcome also home. very proud that complete strangers would be there at all hours of the day and night to greet these troops that had so much stuff happened to them and, and they were complete strangers that were just Americans that were just there to say thank you. We're there to show them that we as citizens of the United States are 100% with them. What, 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 what veteran group is this? No veterans group, this is just the uh, main troop greeters. Oh, okay. We have uh, people that's never been in the service and some that's been in all branches of service, you know? So there's a World War II veteran, Bill Knight, uh, that's one of the original troop greeters. They did this during the Gulf War as well, and he did it then. And, and then uh, a Marine, Jerry Mundy, that's 73. No 900 numbers? If you can't get anybody, call your sister, I'll talk to her. <laughs> you have to make a soldier smile before he goes over. That's all that's needed. But I wouldn't mind if it ended yesterday. And everybody came home and all the moms had their little boys back, uh, daughters back. You all done already? Did you wake them up? She was already up. Good for you, sir. <laughs> Welcome home, guy. I appreciate you. Jerry was just, we were instantly attracted to him because he had all the troops laughing and he's joking at the airport. And, and both of them just really opened their lives to us. And, as we went into their lives, it just it kind of became this deeper and bigger story. I was talking to the doctor, and uh, they told me I had uh, prostate cancer, you know. So, who knows how long it's gonna last. Are you worried about dying alone? Well, yeah. It's, uh, It's nothing to get excited about or anything, you know? I mean, uh, things will be what they will be. Yeah, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. When when your time comes, I, uh, if you got a million people around you, well, there's nobody. There's this whole life, all these struggles that they're going through outside the airport, and it's really about growing old in America or, or anywhere, you know? I mean, I think, for me, I, I still, I'm watching my mom go through it, obviously, but I, I look and say, okay, in 
30 years, this is where I'm going to be headed, and I need to find something like that. They have just found this thing that has put so much purpose back into their life and to be that age and to be so committed to this, I think was really inspiring. When we started doing this film, we actually thought it would maybe be a year, the war would be over, you know, that would be a nice ending, the last troops coming home, and we quickly realized that that wasn't going to be the case, that the war was going to go on for quite some time and, and the ending wasn't going to be the troops all coming home. I was lucky none of my kids had to go for anything, but now the grandchildren, the older grandchildren are just the right age now to... She hasn't been before. She was in helicopter school. She's a helicopter pilot. And she didn't get done school in time to go, but this time she'll be going, they'll both be going. That's gonna be hard. About? It was hard when he left before. But he went, he didn't go to Iraq. He was in Kuwait the whole time. But he got back home. Now he has two little girls. So this time when he goes, he'll have two little girls under three years old. So many families in America are going through that same exact thing where they have to send a loved one off. And I didn't understand how painful it was until I saw Aaron's mom tried to say goodbye to Amy. And I, then I understood a little bit more what this war actually meant. And I think it was very a personal experience to sit there and watch now this family that I've become a part of for four years now have to go through this. People read the synopsis or something of the film and it's like, oh, it's like elderly people uh, shaking hands with troops. But to me, it's about so much more just about life, you know? And, Gita and I have been so changed by making the movie and we just have a totally different outlook on life. Community involvement, I think, is so important around the country. Pitching in and just doing something and I think you see this little simple gesture has this ripple effect that changes the lives of people and affects so many people on both sides of the handshake, you know? And uh, I just would like people to take away that you know, these little simple gestures can make a huge difference. You can make a difference doing something simple.